I would like to introduce yourself. Well, I'm Kelvin, Kelvin Lewis, and also he's a doctor. We actually met in the gym. Yes, we did. fitness when I first moved to Ghana and we came to, you know, talking about business because he's not just a doctor, he's into a whole bunch of stuff. And you guys are just fine. <laughs> fine. So, Kelvin, Rush, welcome on the channel. Thank you very much. Good to be here. Good to be here. Right. So, um, you know, through our conversations, I came to find out that you love farming. I do. So as a doctor, why, why are you acting like a villager? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, people always eat, right? And so farming is one of those things that if you do it right, you never go broke. You never go hungry. I mean, you, you probably never even pay for food for a long time to come, you know? So, um, so that's part of the reason why I'm in there. But I have actually always had a passion for farming. I mean, you know, I grew up in Kumasi. With my grandmother, you know, she had a big land, and everybody had their portion, you know. So, especially during the rainy season, everybody had a portion where they had to weed. Okay. Okay. So I had mine, my sister had their hairs, my cousins, everybody had theirs, you know. So growing up with the in the bush was quite quite a, a fun experience, you know. So every every sort of you plant peppers, you plant watermelon, you plant something, corn especially, and so farming has always been a part of my my upbringing. Okay. You know, but then I guess I kept passing my exam in school, so I kept you know going forward <laughs> and progressing academically. And you know, back in the day, it was either doctor, pilot, or bank manager. Or a lawyer. Exactly. If you're a lawyer, then I you get know. it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I kept passing my exam. I kept making progress, and so I, I kind of gravitated towards medicine. You know, but I mean, I don't regret being a doctor because uh, it has also opened my 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 eyes to a lot of opportunity, a lot of connections. You know, if I if I through my medicine that I finally got into formal agriculture, you know, so I'm not I'm not just into farming. I'm also, I'm actually also doing food processing. So I'm trying. I'm, I'm in the whole value chain. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get into that. We're gonna get into that. <laughs> so uh, I know that a lot of people are interested in farming because yes. I made a video about farming and uh, you know it got a lot of interest. That's why I'm like. Who's the best person to bring on this channel? Um, so you have a YouTube channel as well. Yes, right? I do. I do. Where you talk about a whole bunch of stuff. Well, health and wellness predominantly, but you know, when it comes to when it comes to health and wellness, it really encompasses everything. Right. You know, because your mental health, you know, your financial well being, your physical well being, so all of those come under wellness. So okay. yeah, so we do talk about a lot of things. Awesome. So I will leave his channel on the description below. So check him out, Kevin Olu. Yeah, all right. <laughs> So, uh, you went to agriculture. Yes, what exactly are you planting? So, currently, I'm doing uh, mangoes. Okay. Commercially, I'm doing mangoes and a little bit of cocoa. And recently, I'm, I'm well, this year, I'm going to start sorghum as well. So, yeah, okay. because, because mangoes and cocoa, those are a, a bit long term. So, you also need something short term to okay. kind of, you know, hold balance it out. Exactly. So, let, let me get into that. So, you're doing mango. Yes. Right? yes. And you told me you went to the brown yeah, like, well, now it's uh, Bono East. Bono East. Yes. And then how far is that from my car? Ooh, it's quite far. I mean, yeah, we are talking about, it, it, by driving, we are, talking, we are looking about six, seven hours. Okay. If you're going by public transport, that's going to be a bit longer. Okay. So that's like nine hours if you go by public Yes, it's possible. So why did you choose that place? Is it good for mango? And so and they are, typically, mangoes are grown in the Bono East as well as in the Greater Accra. So if you see mangoes in Dodoa and so commercial mango is predominantly in the Bono East and in the, in that part of the Great Africa. You know, so it was either here or there. Now the cost of land in these parts is very, very high. You know, because the, you mean this part of Accra? Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Great Accra, Great Accra is very, very high. And I mean, to put it in perspective, the cost of the land I got over there was about one tenth when they were selling to me in Accra okay. here. Okay. Yeah. So of course you have to weigh the, the pros and the cons. It's six hours away. You know, this is just forty five minutes away. So but if you look at the cost of the land, I mean it, it made sense to go over there. Right. And then also I had a mentor. I still I still have a mentor and he has a farm. In fact, he was a national best farmer twenty eighteen, you know, and his his farm is over there. He's growing up, he's cultivating about five hundred acres of mango alone. Right. His total land is over Two thousand acres, but the mango farm is about five hundred acres, and he's in that area, so it's like it made sense to start over there. Absolutely, well. I agree with you. I just, I just wanted you to explain to people why you chose yeah. that because I mean it's business, right? Mm -hmm. If you're going in one half or or you're going in that price, you're gonna sell the mango for the same price. True. Nobody cares how True. much you pay for the land, so it makes it makes all the sense in the world. So how long does it take for a mango to be ready? When when you plant? So if everything goes according to plan, you can actually start um, harvesting within three four years. Okay, yeah. but 
generally you are probably looking at five years. So when you can, you can everything go dry. You mean like rain, a lot of rain, season. Everything, or... everything. So the season, so the rain must be right. You know, mango doesn't actually like a lot of rain. So too much rain is actually not good for mangoes. Oh, yeah, okay. that's the interesting thing. You know, so you need the, the atmosphere, the climate to be right. Okay. You know, you need to make you, you need to have the fruiting. I'm sorry, the flowering to be right. Okay. You know, you need to have the the fertilization happening at the right time. You know, and all these things require capital. You know, in fact, that's one of the one of the challenges of agriculture, especially in, in, in Ghana. The lack of capital or access capital is really challenging. So it makes people cut corners, and so they never really get the the yield at the right time. You know, so and I mean, for instance, I my first commercial farm farming activity I went to was cocoa. And it, is, it took almost six, seven years before we actually saw first fruit, you know, because we really didn't know what we're doing. We just started the thing and, you know, we just learning. We're learning. Trying, trying to learn. Exactly. You know, but typically you're supposed to have had your first fruit by within uh, four or five years. For Coco. For Coco. I was going to get on that, but now you, you answered the question for me. So Coco is also like about the same time frame, basically. Yes, it's about the same time frame. But it could be longer. It could be longer, right? Depending on the conditions that I mean that prevail at that particular time, and also if you able because the fertilizer, for, for instance, is money. So there was a time when fertilizer was subsidized. I mean, I think it's still subsidized, but if you look at the general economics currently, the cost of fertilizer has almost tripled. So you know, that's going to affect the application, and that has something to do with the cities and towns, right? Because very true. it's coming from outside. So very true. If it was five dollars and it was like let's say. 30 cities at a time, mm -hmm. now you look at like the base on because it went from 5 point something mm -hmm. to almost 15. Well, currently it's about 450 Ghana cities for a bag of fertilizer. Wow. And you're looking at about 4 or 5 bags per acre. So, I mean, that's, yeah, that's, 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 that's a lot. lot. It adds that's up, up. Yeah. You know, so that's part, that's part of the challenge. So, a lot of people are not doing agriculture properly. You know, so the yields are not, I mean, take sorghum for instance. That, I mean, people are, are, are harvesting about 5, I what do you call it, about, um, 50, 50 bags per acre, okay. whereas down here we are harvesting we are harvesting far less, you know, because the expertise and then the money, the capital to actually make sure they're doing the right thing, okay. you know. So there, there, there's a lot of potential, but capital is is, is, is lacking. So, so it's a problem. lack of capital seems to be the prevalent problem it is. across board of across board. Ghana because of I keep preaching that on my channel, like access to capital is so hard. It's hard. And other parts of the world, it's not like it's so easy when you go in and you give it to you, but certain stuff like you know, you have your line, you do it, you should get something. Or credit cards, people have credit cards mm -hmm. that they can try for the meantime to help them at least do their first harvest yeah. or whatever. Yeah. It's it's much easier to get capital to start stuff stuff in the in the West or outside of Ghana, but Africa, let's put it that way. But you see, it's not it's not it's not the capital it's not necessarily just the access to capital, but also so let me let me use my experience. So when we started um, a, a mango farm for instance, we actually wanted a hundred acre piece of a uh, parcel of land. Okay. We didn't have money to actually buy 100 acres of land. Right. And the, the family or the, the the owners of the land were not willing to give us a paid plan. Okay. Payment plan, yeah. Yes, they didn't want to give us a payment plan. Okay. So they so you have to buy what you can afford right now. Right. Now elsewhere, payment plans are like the order of the day. So if I have my projections and I know that I can afford to pay um, for 100 acres in let's say six months or one year, I can actually go for the 100 acres and start planting because right. see, the, the, the key is if I plant 100 acres, I know that in four or five years, I'm, I'm getting to harvest that 100 acres, right? So give me a pay plan of a year or two. Let me pay the 100 acres so I can plant now. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. now the situation I find myself in is that if I should get the additional 50 acres today, and I even planted it today, I'm not going to have mango at the same time when these other ones are, are, are ready for sale. Right. You know, which means that my projection is going to be off by a few a few years. I get it. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's a, it's a challenge. So the, 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 the human beings or the people themselves don't understand, are not so business oriented in that regard they want what they will eat today it's the mindset thank you you get into that that's been a, a, a problem though not just for this but almost i i, I preach about that a lot is you when you think about you know giving somebody a job like do my window for me and then they will they will they will probably be like 50 percent and run away with, with it and that's like short-term thinking and yes, i think it is, it is. it's a it's, it's a it's a real problem here with regards to almost everything. Yes, it is. And it's, it's, it's part of our culture, it's part of our upbringing. I mean, every, I'm sure a lot of people have heard this in where they, they talk about how you should think about yourself, like, don't tell your dream, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't, you know, think about yourself. So we are very subsistent in our, in our mindset. And very, very, self, very, and very selfish. Yes. Very selfish. Yes, everybody, everybody looks at them. So what do I, what, what, I mean, it, it, 
And here's the thing, it's a global thing. I mean, human beings are selfish. That's, that's by nature. By, by nature. nature, everybody is selfish. But we um, we take it a bit a bit uh, uh, to an extreme. I think Africans, I think Africans, we are we are we are out there with regards to you know selfishness and greed. Uh, it's everywhere, but I think here it's kind of like almost like primitive. You know, it's it's, it's messed up, but it's, that's that's a fact because I mean, how many in Africa do you know that come together to to do something? Because now the bank is not supporting you, but three or four. Uh, brothers, now you know our situation. The, this person will not help us with a, with a payment plan. So you and I could team up, and now we have the money without needing the bank of three or four yeah. people. But nobody trusts each other, because I know I'm selfish. <laughs> I'll do this to you. You know, it's quite it's, rare. It is. It is. So, so it's quite rare to find somebody to team up with. If you think about a lot of companies, Apple, all of that, you start with somebody. But here, everybody want to be like, just me so they can, you know? You know, I was having a conversation with a friend yesterday, and this, this issue actually came up. You know, and, and it's one of the reasons why a lot of African country, uh, companies do not go beyond the founder. So when the founder dies, the company collapses because a lot of them are, are sole proprietors. You know, whereas uh, other countries have more partnerships. So even if one partner dies, the company still progresses. You know, there's a plan, but here it's all about the individual. Yes. You know, and it's it's a major problem. I mean, it, it will take a, we need we need to we sort of rearrange our our minds and do a whole lot of things. It will take it will take some time, but I, know. I think I think we will get there. But you see, here's my thing. A lot of a lot of the people who are actually doing these things have also had experience out there. I mean, I'm talking about like in the US, in the UK, wherever. But it's like when they come down here, they revert to their defaults. It's not no, it's not easy. I get where you're coming from, but it's not easy. Especially like I'll give you my example. Is you come in with a with what thankfully I found myself a great Ghanaian partner. So Acadian, which is like my real estate company, I'm with a Ghanaian. Working with somebody is is if you look at all these big companies, it was funded by maybe two or three people. Mm-hmm. But there's yeah, that yeah. kind of ability. Yes. Not, entrepreneurship is hard. You get oh, yes, more <laughs> and you have somebody challenges going on, all this and that, you know, to check each other. I mean, just to even bounce ideas or somebody. That alone, you know, two brains does not make, you know, two. It's actually three. There's a third mind or whatever they call it. So working with somebody, I, I enjoy I enjoy that because I'm not that selfish. But most of us here, so let me get on this. So I've had Many, many, many issues starting business in Ghana, right? Land issues, yeah. people stealing from you, oh, people yeah. doing this. So after a while, you have to come with a certain mindset. Me, I know, I came in understanding this already. That this is what I was going to face. Because my father has a couple of businesses. I know all these stories before I even came in. So my father has a water company. And initially, we were paying these guys like monthly. And the business almost collapsed because the same selfish mindset. I'm sick today. I'm sick tomorrow. So my older brother came up with a brilliant idea to pay people only on commission. Yeah. Only on commission. The people who sell getting commission, the people who printing out who are making the water, commissions, so everything was broken down into commission. If you don't work, you don't eat. And the business just boomed. I mean, they're begging them to take the studio off. They don't want to take off. So it's the it's, you just have to understand the mindset in a way. And then kinda it will, it will get better, but they just don't they, they think like this is not my 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 yeah. mind, so I don't, I don't really care. See, but of course, the, the, I, 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 on this point, I would also say that sometimes the institutions or, I mean, the system also does not help you to not be selfish. Exactly. You, know, you, go, to, you go to a government facility, you are looking for some information, right? You are trying to go through the proper channels, and you are, you are like the fool. Because everybody else is coming and bypassing and, get, and getting whatever they need, they need you, you are still waiting for whatever information. Yeah, you know, I'm actually currently dealing with, dealing with one such situation where a government agency has come in to do the assessment and just not release the certificate. They say even though we've paid everything, we have to tip them before the. And you have to you have to pay for lunch. Yeah. So we 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 not to get too much into my details because of course issues, but the same thing you have to you have to you have to buy them lunch and stuff like that to speed up. The and it process. makes it makes it very 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 difficult. I mean. From, from 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 where I sit right now, if I look at my food processing company, for instance, the amount of money I've actually invested in there. So what are you processing? Oh, well, currently we process yam and then sweet potatoes. So, yeah. so when, you, when you say process, like you just package it up or you guys cut into french fries, what? So what we, we are doing the fries, so we have yam chips, we have sweet potato fries as well. You know, because I mean, why is, why is, why are we importing, um, so what's it called? It why, make, is, it, it why, make, why are we importing french fries? It doesn't make any sense at all. You know, sweet potato is even healthier than french fries anyway. Yeah. You know, so we have the yam in, in 
that form you, you it's I'm frozen. Not for this. Exactly, it's frozen. So you just take it from your from your freezer, you open it, you add your seasoning and egg fry. So that's one product. We're also doing flour, so we have flour, sea potato flour, and then we also have Gary made from sea potato. So that's a, an interesting product that we are pushing out there very soon. What's the name of that company? It's legacy foods. Legacy foods. Legacy okay. foods, yes. Yeah. You do everything, man. You have podcasts, you have a YouTube channel, you farm and you process it. I love the hustle, man. Yeah. I think that's how we became friends. When I meet people like you, I feel like yeah, I just I just met another name and I get really happy. Charlie, it's necessary, it's necessary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You know, I mean, even though, of course, some 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 school of thoughts also says that you should focus on one thing and then blow it up before you move on. I mean, it's... But I think you are doing that, though. You are that good. Yes, I am. And, 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 and then you channel the money out. That's that's how, that's, how, that's how it works, really. Yeah, I mean, and the thing is, I mean, to be honest, I mean, all, all my business is actually linked, you know, to, the, like I mentioned, the wellness, you know, because wellness is healthy foods. And so that's where the food company fits in. Yeah, so pretty much every everything is linked. I'm I'm actually not doing anything out of um or I'm not I'm not directly involved in any any business that's really out of my comfort zone. Even though I mean I do have um, investment in, in some other businesses. Exactly, but it's you not like controlling that. So mm -hmm. it's all about structure, honestly, because I do a lot of stuff as well. But then like the main thing is like it's all about structure. Mm -hmm. It's all about structure and finding the right people sometimes. Yeah. Yes, find I mean, the right people. So that I think that's what I think that's the most important thing. That's the most important thing. You yeah. have the right people. Yeah, the so for thing. example, the car wash. If the car wash is be open right now, I'm not gonna be there. You know, I'm, I'm not gonna be there. But I have a trustworthy guy that I really, really, really trust. Mm -hmm. I've been working with this guy for a while. There's a laundry mat that the guy there. I don't go there. Yeah. Then you know it's all about structuring. It's so you set it up. You find opportunity. You mm -hmm. set it up, and then it can with systems in place. This Lebanese and the Indians, Malcolm. You think at every Malcolm there's a owner there. No. No. no, so I think systems is really important, and if you have the system in place, then you get a ball rolling. Maybe in the in the in the initial stages, you might have to go hard and yeah. then get a ball rolling, and then you can focus on something else. It is. I mean, it's, de it's definitely challenging, but it's it's worth it. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. You'll need something. Absolutely, <laughs> and it's like so. This process later on, you might even process your own mango. Oh yes, I mean it, it, it eventually, uh, of course, it still requires capital, but we but definitely food processing is food processing. You know, but I mean the thing about mangoes is that right now there's high demand for mango because um, you know I don't well there are about four processors currently in Ghana and they are not getting enough mango so there there is a lot of demand for mangoes. I know of those that. Oh, there are four of them. There's HT, there's HTC, and there's another one. There are four. Oh, so you you you, you like you are good just supplying. The well, I mean, so with, with respect to the mango, we haven't really we 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 are we are two years in now. Yeah, so we still have about two years to go. Because 2021 is when we spoke about yes. this. Before, that's before you even did it. Yeah, we, so we actually started in 2021. So we, this is our third year. So I mean, there are but there two are, more there, years. So two more years. So let's this year will end and then the next year, hopefully, if, if everything has been done right, we will be harvesting. So how's it looking? Is it, is it growing tall? Well, interestingly, they, they, they're actually flowering. So I was actually concerned. I was like, ah. so I called my, my mentor and I was like, why are my trees flowering? Because they're only two years old. I mean, two and a half. And he said, oh. That's actually a sign that they are, they are healthy. Okay, that's so he actually said, they, 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 apparently some of them will actually fruit, you know, but it's not going to be you know significant, you know. But I actually it shows that they, they, they are healthy. I'm actually excited. It, it tells it tells that we are actually doing something right. That's good. It's not easy. That this is long term thinking, though. Yes, you don't yes, need you don't need short term thinking to no, survive no. this. Because you are working, breaking your back, spending all this money for five years before you get to see any pain. It's hard work, and that's the challenge for a lot. You see, social media is, is turning things upside down, you know, and it, it's, it it, it's a good thing, but it's also not good. It's a tool. It's a att att attention span and everything. Like right now, even, you know, this video might be too long, right? So, you know, people want this yes. just like that. And they think that I put my money in, I might, I might get the money out immediately. Yeah. And that's, that, that's mindset will not be helpful, you see, because even those who are on social media and make money from social media, you can tell the difference between those who are looking for a quick quick buck and then those who are thinking long term, you see. Because you can put out content and get paid immediately, but then it gets missing along the line. Look at the musician. There, there, there's music that you listen to today and you're like, no, no, I'm not going to listen to this there again. There you go. And then there's music that you listen to over and over again. So, I mean, what are you looking for? Are you looking for something that's going to give you income for 10, 20, 50 years? Are you looking for money now? I agree. Which is why, uh, so... You are brilliant for what you talk about. It's health stuff is always going to be there. And I see channels like this. I did a lot of education before I came on YouTube. And looking at what my interests are. And some people are, you know, talking about the news. Like, 
this happened. I remember when Wadamaya had this issue, and it came a lot of people were talking about Wadamaya issue. But you know, you you not your channel is not even about that. Just for, for the quick, quick, quick box, they're trying to exactly. jump in and, <laughs> and, and, and capitalize on somebody's misfortune, right? You just gotta you just gotta be aligned and know yeah. what you're doing and, and, and consistency. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and, and long term long term man, it pays because once once the mango start growing, mm -hmm. that's it, right? It's just yeah, gonna yeah, keep yeah. producing. And you just sit back and collect it every I'm telling day. you, you know, why it, it, Another, 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 so so my, my mentor, for instance, he was in corporate Ghana for a long time, uh, one of the big corporate guys. And he tells me, so he has he had actually started a mango. The mango was going to be his retirement plan. Okay. So he had started like 15 years before he retired. And then at first, so he had been harvesting mango for about 10 years before he finally retired. The same tree, so mango still coming out. The same tree. Now, here's the thing. When he actually retired and he went to sit on the farm himself, so he actually left Accra and went to sit in the, in the farm. So he actually lives there now. Okay. Is it the same guy I'm thinking about? Well, I don't know who you're thinking about. I'm thinking about a castle purple guy. No, not him. This is okay. a different person. So this guy says that in the first year that he was on the farm himself, he actually harvested more mangoes than the first, the previous five years put together. Whoa, was somebody stealing some of the mangoes? Not stealing, but then they were not managing it as well. Okay. You know, so, and that's part of the challenge, you know, and that's one of the reasons why you need to find the right people to manage, manage your things. Almost everything. Because if, if, if they, they don't pay attention to it, and this is the, just within one year, you didn't plant any additional trees, you didn't do anything differently to the trees per se, but just the fact that now they were doing the fertilizer application on time, they were spraying the insects on time, they were making sure that everything was being done as, I mean, timely fashion. The you you know blew up, so attention that so that's part of the challenge with agriculture. As it is now, you have to be there because if you leave it for the villagers, they will apply their village science, and that will be usually and not yield the results you are looking for. Thank you. Let me let me check in a little bit. And that's that's the problem with Africans. Like a lot of people say, oh, farmers are poor and all that. It's because they are not learning and applying exactly. applying the, the new knowledge exactly, and that's where the problem is. You know, the cute thing is, I think that's the that problem. That's a problem in Ghana because if you look at my house, there is no, you know, bugger proof. And then I have a, I have, I know this. Most, if you drive around in Ghana, most buildings have first floor, second floor, store, store, and then an apartment on top. Yes, everybody. Yes, it's the new and I'm, trend. I'm like, you gotta think outside the box sometimes. You don't have to. You don't have to. Cop you gotta. You gotta. You gotta be a critical thinker. And think about why people are doing this and that before you just follow. Yeah. You blindly follow. I agree. And I think we have a problem. We don't want to change. It's always like, oh, that's how. That's how it's always. I like agree that. completely. I agree completely. That's, that's and it, it's, it, it, it's 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 it has been institutionalized everywhere you go. It's it's kind of that's like how that. we do it. Yeah, that's how we do it. You can't come and change it. And I, I strong a, a, a big part of me believe that's even why our politics we are struggling. Because if somebody was to come in right now and try to you know change things. The opposition they will face is not even from the opposition party. It's from they themselves. They are their own party system, and it's it's going to take a lot of reformation to get us out of. Because I, I honestly, for the, for the life of me, I don't understand why we are where we are today as a country. Look, I I, I keep saying this: this Ukraine war was actually a blessing which we failed to capitalize on. Let's just use wheat. So we get wheat. I mean, Ukraine is one of the biggest suppliers of flour. Right now, Ukraine is having challenges. They can't export wheat. We are sitting in this country. Are you aware that there's been research done in this country, and people are actually doing it? You can actually do bread, make bread from cassava flour. You can make bread from sweet potato flour. You can make bread from yam flour. Now, as this currently, if you were to use our flour to do the bread, it would be expensive, right? Right. Now, Ukraine has a problem. The cost of flour has quadrupled. Now, your bread that you're buying for five cities is now being sold at twenty cities. Uh, yeah, part of it. Which then means, which then means that now, if you actually did that same bread with your sweet potato flour, it will be cheaper than now the new the new wheat. What does our government do? Nothing. So we are still depending on the Ukraine that is war torn to still send us the wheat or the flour so that we can still do extensive bread. But we have local alternatives we can use, and it could actually start an industry right here. I agree. eventually reduce the cost of our inputs. I agree. I don't know what we are doing. I think it would take time. But I get exactly where you're coming from. People still importing a lot of rice and all that. Like we can grow rice here and all that stuff. It's like so somebody, somebody, like, somebody needs to put in a plan to help us get there. But it looks like, you know, 
Uh, it must come from Ukraine. Yeah. So whether Ukraine is uh, is at work, it must come from Ukraine. So we are here waiting for Ukraine. Ukraine came to come and give us bread. That's the problem. But then there comes a time where somebody changes things around them, like Rwanda. So we just gotta keep praying. Well, we just gotta keep praying until so, you know somebody shows up and try to change things around. Because unfortunately, as of now, it's like yeah, we we're not changing anything around. We'll get, we'll get there, we'll get there. I mean, I'm very hopeful. Yeah, me too. It will take some time, but I think I think we will. Uh, if you look at how rich we are, like gold, when you talk about gold, Ghana is on the list as far as the country that can produce the most gold. You talk about cocoa, number two, and a whole bunch of natural resources. It's such a small country. You know, if you go to uh, Dubai or this country, they only have oil. They yeah. have nothing else. Yeah. And everybody's eating it, so it's just poor management. I, I poor totally management agree. from the top. Uh, totally you, agree. you know, so it's, it's a matter of time to have good leaders because we have everything, man. We literally have everything. Okay, so how long can one harvest the mango for before it's kind of, kind of like stop uh, producing the mango? Well, it, it doesn't really stop producing mango. Maybe the yield will, will reduce, but it will, it will keep producing mango so long as you keep doing your part. I mean, you know, trees are pretty much eternal. You know, now the thing about mango is that you need to. Okay, so if you look at a mango tree in your house, it, it grows big. Yeah, yeah. When you're doing commercial mango, that's actually not what you want. Because the bigger the mango tree is, the less productive it is. Mm. Because then it's using more of the resources to, you know, flower. Uh, what do you call it? To, to for the vegetative side. You know, vegetative side meaning that the leaves, the branches. So actually, you need to prune the the mango. So that mm. so if you go to commercial farms, you realize that the mangoes tend to be skinny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and very spacious. You know, they they have very few branches. Okay. You know, so if you keep pruning them, making sure that they're they're, they're there's a certain shape that they must maintain. If you make sure that that shape is maintained, they're going to have it for a very long time. So on average, how long does it take before it starts? Like you see that, okay, uh, the yield is going down. Maybe 10 to 20 years? It can, it can about 15 years. Okay. There are about. Okay. You know, but like I said, if your management is good, you can actually extend that. You know, and even though I, when I started, I mentioned that we, we had 100, 100 acres and we didn't get this, we have 50. So now even if we do get the additional 50, it means they're not harvesting at the same time. That could also be a blessing. It means that, you know, if, if, we, 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 if we can get to a point where even when the first 50 have reached the point where we have to replant them, there's already a second 50. Okay. That's it. That, that's, that's the question I was about to ask you. Yes. <laughs> that, so you could do it in such a way that you, you know, okay, this in your mind, okay, this has a life span of let's say 50 yeah. years. Though, you know, you can still buy the young is going to be, you know, yeah, you know. Yeah. So, because of that, you might be like, okay, I'll replace maybe 20 acres of this, and then you know, so you always have mango, but slowly kind of replace them, yeah. And you see, the, the other thing too is that, and um, because mango is a tree plant, it's going to take four years. If you manage it well, you can actually make your money back before the four years. Oh. Through uh, if you use the land for other things, you know, so the mango is still growing. You can grow corn. You, okay. you can grow beans. You can. There's grow a name for that. Intercropping. intercropping. There you go. So you can do you can do that and actually make back your money within two three years, you know. So that by the time you actually start harvesting mangoes, it's actually all profit I guess. because you've actually paid for your cost, you know. So it, it, there there are ways of do of doing it, um, but it would require, like I said, good management. Because again, if you don't manage it well, corn can end up catching fire, which can then put all your all your investment out. exactly. You know, so the management must be solid. You need to plow at the at the right time. You need to maintain your fire belts. You know, so it's not just about planting the seeds. You know, planting the seedlings in this case. You need to have the management on point. I mean, thankfully, we haven't had any any issue in the end, and that's because we didn't just go. We had a, we had a mentor. You know, and so and mentorship. Then you should, I'm sure you do research on top of. Of course, of course. But mentorship is very important because you, you can't do the research, but um, the application of the research or the knowledge might be different on the ground. So you need somebody ahead of you to sort of guide you. I completely agree. <laughs> and I, that's how I live my life, really. I, I, it's a life hack that, you know, if, if more people take that on, to go to somebody who's already done something that you want to do, is the easiest and the most smartest way that you can <laughs> go about anything. Because you could read all the theories that you want in school and all that <laughs> stuff, right? Which is why me studying business in school doesn't really make sense to me. Like, <laughs> it's better to go follow a businessman. Yeah. Right? Just work for him for free or whatever. Free tuition. And you will learn more than you can ever learn in school. It's true. Because you see how it's done in real time. I remember when I was trading stock, I read a whole bunch of books. Listen to one book. I was trading. Everything was okay. But I met a guy who became a mentor. And that's when it changed everything. Somebody who's actually doing it that you know. 
it changed it changed it changes everything so you are very smart in that regard yeah 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 so I'm, i mean I'm, I'm very hopeful that we actually make the, the four-year mark for earlier so yeah well your fingers crossed well me. maybe i will come to your farm where you have a thing so you guys <laughs> you guys can see the level <laughs> farm yeah definitely definitely okay so uh, i think i want to wrap this up because right. it's taking too long uh the sogum um how how what, what why sogum and how long does it take for it to be had because you said it's obviously more short yes it's short term and sorghum is only a while it takes about three four months uh, to harvest and and it's actually a very nutritious uh, grain we don't grow enough of it in ghana because there's not a lot of education but i'm actually targeting and um, getting ghana because they have a new policy where they are they are going to buy, be buying locally so um this is my because we are currently what we are doing is a pilot and so depending on the outcome you know they will share with them if it makes sense then we're going to go all in because three months for sure where you're going thank you i think so you just gave out a gem to these guys but guinness is big you can all eat oh yes, and, yes, yes. there's a lot of and food. and that's what i'm always preaching about with regards to farming because i have an uncle and he's really big in farming really really big in that and he's well educated he went to school for it i mean and so farming could be really lucrative if you move like you before you came in you didn't just go and plant sugar you know about guinness yeah and that's a problem Right, that's a problem why farming is looked down on because people don't do the research that's mm-hmm. necessary before you plant something on the ground. You should know who your buyer is already. Yeah. Yeah. You should know your projection, some sort of, you know, some sort of analysis behind yeah. before you go on the ground and plant something. I think that's what we lack in Africa. The people that do what you do, yeah. you do before yeah. they're going, they make they make the money. <laughs> All right, guys. So this concludes the interview. Um, I'm going to leave. Kevin's YouTube channel in the description below. So go check him out. He talks about a whole bunch of stuff. Really knowledgeable guy, as you get you guys already, you know, found out from the interview. So if you've not subscribed to the channel already, can do so like this video and up to next time my friends. Legendary. Peace.